So I get a lot of people asking me, hey, Rum, how do you draw such photorealistic portraits? Well, like, what's your process? How, what steps do you take? And, you know, despite me telling them to draw the rest of the fucking owl, this apparently is not a clear enough direction. So this is going to be my tutorial on how to draw photorealism. Uh, the goal here is to be able to follow these videos step by step, and at the end of the day, you'll get to the same painting that I did. So before we get started with the tutorial itself, there's going to be a couple things that you need. So number one, you're going to need an art tablet. You could do this on a mouse, but that's crazy. Um, any tablet will do. You're going to need an art program. I'm using Photoshop. I think other programs will work fine too. You're also going to need a crippling sense of depression. And you're going to need a brush pack that I'm putting in the comments below. This is the Deharme brush pack. I use it for almost everything. It's a great brush pack. You should definitely use it. Anyway, moving on. So when I, I think the best way to learn photorealism is to look at photos and then try to make them re real, photorealism. Anyway, the, the goal here is to find images that have a very specific light and dark dichotomy. You can just go on Google Images and grab an image that has like strong shadows, very specific shapes. That's probably the best way to learn. But since I'm a raging asshole who doesn't listen to my own instructions, I've chosen Olivia Hay from Luna. Uh, we're gonna draw her because she's the best girl. I rest my case. Anyway, this image does have some qualities that we can find useful here. We do have some light and dark here, as you can see. We have our sp very specific dark areas here. These are things we need to identify before we can move into the photo to see if it's going to be a suitable drawing. Um, this is a smiley face, isn't it? Uh, anyway, there are also some very specific light areas. We see on the forehead, the nose, uh, some of the chin and cheek areas that looks... Oh. Okay. Um, so this is a this is suitable. I think this this is going to teach a lot of very very useful skills. Like we can draw some dramatic dynamic eyes. We get a lot of uh, lip action going on here. Uh, you even learn how to draw teeth, which is one of the hardest parts of digital art. So it's going to be a challenge, and I think it, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And by fun, I mean horrible. But you'll 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 come out better for it. Maybe I make no guarantees. Anyway, this image is out is uh, going to be linked in the video description. This is taken off original image that is very blown out in uh, contrast. So I did some minor editing on my own, kind of reshaped it to a more portrait style uh, proportion and uh, should be able to go from there. This is important because if you don't have this, your, your drawing is going to turn out wonky and I don't want to be blamed for it. One last thing before we start is I want to give credit to the original uh, photographer of this photo, which who I believe is first Apple on Twitter. Um, I could be wrong. I didn't see a watermark in the photo. Um, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Your descent to madness is about to begin. So the disclaimer before we go any further with this tutorial is that I am not classically trained. I've never been to art school. I've kind of learned things my own way. I don't read other tutorials because I can't read. Anyway, so a lot of the stuff I say might not be orthodox, but I'm going to put my final result of this tutorial up on the screen right now. So as you can see, it turned out pretty well. It's not perfect. It probably never will be unless you're uh, pretty good at art. Uh, so with that said, we're going to try to get our closest representation as possible. So the number one thing we're going to start with is the sketch. And if you read the video title, that should be pretty obvious. The sketch is very important because this is going to give us the basis for which we can create our shapes, fill in our colors, all of that kind of jazz. So what we're going to do is what I call the grid method. And apparently this is a real art technique. I, so the way we're going to start this is we're going to make a new image, but first we need to know what size this image is. So we go to image, image size, we can take a look at the image. This is 1000 by 1300. So any image we make has to be some multiple of this, same 10 to 13 ratio, right? Okay, so we're going to start, we can make our image now, we're going to start making a new document. Let's just start with 1000 by 1300. Also resolution, um, this is the default to 72, you should set this to 300. Why 300? I don't no, I've just been told to do that and it seems to work. So this is still a little bit too small. 1000 by 1300 is going to be a very small image. An 8 pixel brush, this is far too large. So I would say we want to go at least three times the size. So we can go to image, image size. I changed mine to 300%. That's where I'm at. So in the end, your image is going to be 3000 by 3900. This just gives you more space to work with and I think it's better. I mean, you look at the same brush stroke now. Far more detailed, far more clean. Uh, allows you to get a lot more in without making things seem blurry or overlapping. Now at this point you might be wondering why am I going through this entire process when I could just trace the image? And you could, but that would make you a f***ing cheater. Anyway, this actually does help you learn a little bit more about like where things are supposed to go, the general shape of like things like natural curvature of eyes and stuff like that. If you're using Photoshop like me, you're going to go into Edit, Preferences, uh, you're going to go into... G g what? 
Yeah, that button. And here you can set a grid, you can change the colors of the grid, things like that. Start with subdivisions. I, I'm gonna start with four, um, just because it's easier for me. Uh, and I have this map to a hotkey, but you'll have to do this. You might have to find your own. So you turn on this grid, as you can see, um, this is gonna split the image into a lot of different sections. And the goal here is to look at these specific sections and use these as a reference. Like you can see where these lines cross. And from here we can create a pretty fair like shape of how we're gonna start. Um, the sketch is important. It's very important because it tells us where, we're, where our colors are supposed to go, but the sketch doesn't need to be perfect. It's not gonna be one of those like photorealistic, like 600 hour charcoal pen sketches you see on Reddit because f that. Now, this is very important. Before you get started, hit that new layer button in the bottom right corner. If you can avoid it, you really don't want to draw on the background layer because it becomes impossible to separate the sketch and it'll make you hate yourself. Maybe even maybe even more than you do already, but don't do it. So, I would use any color you want. Uh, a lot of people use black. I use dark blue because it's easier on the eyes. Uh, you can use any brush size. I use five, but you can see whatever works for you. And with that said, we're actually ready to get started. So, just Use your hotkey, turn on your grid for your uh, your white image. Turn on the grid for your reference image. You can put the reference image right next to your picture if you want. I keep it on another monitor, but you know, it's really up to you. Um, and from there, we can just keep go get right into it. So let's go. So the following is footage from my uh, Twitch channel, which is Twitch TV slash RumR. I try to stream like four or five days a week, sometimes more. Uh, you can come watch me draw and watch me suffer in person. In fact, you can heckle me and call me a piece of while I do so. I love that. Um, anyway, I'm using the exact same method that I described above. You can see I started with four grid lines. I, I quickly moved to five once those were done. Um, mostly just trying to, like, you can see where the borders of the hair are and some like where the eyes end based off of these corners of the grid lines. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect as you start. Just kind of like map. We're kind of just mapping where things are, where things go. Uh, in particular, like, for Olivia, you really want to just make sure you get the shape of the hair correct, uh, get the eyes in the right place, and most importantly, the mouth, you know, that triangle mouth really uh, defining feature there. So we want to make sure we get those right. And so I'm often, I'm often going to open up the grid menu and keep increasing the number of lines. Uh, I started with four, like I recommended, and I keep moving up to five, six, and so forth. There's really no limit to when you should stop. The, the more grid lines you add, the more specific you can get. Uh, I, I think on this one I went all the way up to 12 or 13 um, before I before I called it quits. And, you know, if it's your first time, I'd say go as far as you can, just to the point where you feel comfortable with the sketch. Just make sure, check all the corners of the grid, line, of the grid make sure everything is uh, where it should be. And, you know, like I said, the most important thing is getting the right uh, shapes, not necessarily getting the most detail. I, uh, I did add some sh I did add a little bit of shading as I went along. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it does help to sort of get the uh, get a better idea of where things let where things sit in the drawing, so you can get a better understanding of that light to dark ratio before you start painting. At this point, there are a lot of grid lines, and I think that's good. Um, specifically, in this picture, the eyes, the corner of the eyes, and the edges of the nose, and where those lips are, this this is something you really want to pay attention to. Super important for facial proportions. If you don't pay attention here, you're not your picture's not really going to look like her. And I think that's really, this is really the crucial step. Um, as you get further along with the grid lines is where you really want to start dialing in and really paying attention to where the details sit and fixing any of the errors you might have made earlier. And now I'm just adding more detail because I, I don't know why I did this, but hey, there it is. So after a couple hours of work, maybe less or maybe more, uh, you should have something that looks like this. Um, it's not really super important for everything to be very detailed, but as long as all the facial proportions are where they're supposed to be, I would consider this a success. So at the end of your sketch, you're probably feeling a mixed bag of emotions. Uh, you might be really happy, you might be feeling really accomplished, you might not be so happy, you might be really sad, you might w wonder why you were 
born in the first place. If any or all of those things apply to you, congratulations, you're now an artist. Anyway, that's gonna do it for part one of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you maybe learned something. If there are any suggestions about uh, things I missed or maybe some suggestions you have for me, please leave them in the comments below. You can also contact me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is underscore R-U-M-R. You can also air your grievances out there with me. Maybe we could even get this going as a hashtag or something, like hashtag Olivia Hay Challenge. I don't f***ing know. I'm, I don't use Twitter. I'm a boomer. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, guys.